Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Thuyleen. I'm a PhD student from Wayne State University. And uh, today, uh, the title of my talk is about the, what we call Cloud Workflow Service, which is uh, targeted to automatically scale the center workflow uh, on the demand of the compute and the data resource. Here's the roadmap. So, uh, so um, we know the scientific workflow. The, uh, the term of scientific workflow was first called in 1996. And at that time, they were used for the scientific work, uh, workflow applications in the problem uh, solving environment. But only in recent years, there is a, a dramatic uh, uh, momentum in the research and development of scientific workflows due to the, uh, the, the demands of the increasing demands of the uh, data, uh, data intensive and computer intensive applications. So uh, today, the, uh, the first part of my talk will be the, the, why the center of the is, is important and why they, they are on demand. And then the following uh, uh, technical uh, Technolo uh, technology will be introduced. If the time permit, I will be uh, show some demos for our uh, flows, uh, and they follows by the conclusion and the future work. <coughs> Here's the thing: uh, as science has increasingly uh, become data intensive, and so there is a, a dramatic uh, transition going on from the computation uh, science to e-science. And, uh, but the, today, domain scientists have realized there is a big discrepancy uh, of difference between the rapid growth in the uh, information science with uh, the, the, uh, the much slower progress in the scientific, uh, scientific uh, insights. So the, that's the difference. Uh, it's mainly because of the difficulty in managing the the uh, the distribute and uh, huge increasing uh, increasing the, the data and uh, computations. So 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 Sandy workflow manage system as a tool is needed for the domain scientists to automate their their whole life cycle of the scientific research, from the data collection to the hypothesis formation. To, to the uh, data intensive and computer incentives, the data analysis, to the finally the publish, uh, publication of the <coughs> research results. So because of those requirements from the domain scientists, computer scientists is asked to ch is challenge to integrate, orchestrate, and manage the, the huge, large scale distributed uh, workflow, including their data and computations. And those challenges are posed by the workflow composition, workflow execution, workflow provenance, and the workflow sharing among the research collaborators. Here, oh, I would like to show the full representative workflows from biology and biomedic, um, biomedicine. I want to give you some hints and some ideas and help you to design your own workflows and to accelerate your research and the discovery. Uh, those types of workflow can be widely used in, in other uh, disciplines. So here is the, the first one. I call it the compute intensive workflows. This is example here is we need to, uh, this is the, for the profile sequence alignment. In that example, uh, the, the, uh, the domain scientists required to read the uh, sequence of the uh, uh, DNA, DNA sequences. And then they go through the, the following algorithm. And we don't know, know 
which algorithm is best. We know that actually the, there are lots of the data mining algorithms for uh, dealing with sequence and not alignment. But we don't know, know which one is the best. And sometimes we know that some algorithms fit to some data set, but some doesn't. So in, in that case, why not to try the, all the algorithms using the same data sets and say what is the best? So, so, so all those algorithms can, can be used to, in parallel to, to, to deal with and get the, the best result. But you know, the, the one of the, each of the algorithms requires a, a huge computation. And sometimes the one computer cannot, cannot compute. That is the first problem. Another problem is the data intensive, or we call mem sometimes we call it uh, memory intens intensive workflows. In that case, uh, we have this, a list of the sequence. This sequence probably will grow to thousands of millions, and the data probably only uh, one gigabyte. That's not huge. The problem is, I need to use that sequence to generate a huge matrix and use that matrix to perform our analysis. But our computer right now cannot process it, except that we have to use the HPC or whatever, uh, the other uh, the high performance computing. But that's not another story. So, so we cannot process all those huge data. The way we do is, OK, we partition the sequence into several parts, and we put this each part of the sequence to each to to one node and process it, then we reproduce the matrix. And the partition of the data uh, is required for three uh, cases. One is in that case, the the memory is so intensive we cannot process in one uh, one node. Another part is the data probably is so huge in like in other applications, and we cannot put all the data in one node. In that case, we have to partition the data into the different nodes. Another situation is the, the each part of a, a partition of data it requires a so intensive computation, so we have to partition. But, but anyway, that pattern is so common that we have to partition the data into a different part and then process each part to the different node. That is one pattern. Another Python is also common. It, uh, we call it the pipeline workflow. And that situation is we also have some of the algorithms. And we want to know that using the one data set, what is the algorithm we, we think that's the, we can get the best result? And but in order to get the best result, we have sequence of the workflows that's going on. And each workflow. Compared to others, they feed one data, generate the data, and then use that data as input to feed to another task and generate another data. So the so data uh, in and data out, and then processed to the uh, next uh, uh, task. We have to consider in order to perform, uh, make the workflow uh, efficient, we have to consider to pull the computation and data together. So you don't need to move the data or the computation um, again and again. So that is another uh, situation. Uh, besides all that, uh, the, uh, the above uh, workflows, we have the, the, what we call the parameter swimming workflow. That is also very common in our scientific research. That means that we have some algorithm. And that algorithm is, is uh, Houston algorithm, and this uh, this requires a lot of parameters. We don't uh, we have to adjust those parameters, and uh, those parameters we don't know which uh, the result. So we we try to set up a range of the parameters in in this case, and try to get the best result. So so in that case. The computation is so intensive because it requires a, a, a million computation for for a set of such parameters. The, and parameter sweeping workflow also make cost of our data intensive, because 
for example, in that, in that uh, workflow in biomedicine, the, the, the domain side can, uh, can tune the different parameters that generate uh, uh, the different uh, uh, brain images. Each brain image have the, using the different parameters, use a different um, uh, resolution. So that would generate a lot of um, uh, image data as the intermediary. Thank you. So, Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, so in summary of those uh, typical uh, uh, workflows, we can see that the uh, there are some workflows that require the compute uh, intensity uh, re data resources. Are some of workflows that really require uh, a huge data, we call it the data intensive, and some of the workflows in, in between. So we really have a, a different de uh, demand on the computation and the data. Uh, not mention that another dimension of the uh, workflow. If we create, a, we create a lots of workflow in parallel in that, uh, for this workflow, then the, the situation is, is, uh, is more complex. So in order to, uh, to uh, to deal with that, uh, that complexity, we firstly proposed the, the three-level uh, computing uh, parallelism on the workflow. The first one, we call it the test-level parallelism. So in, that, uh, in this, uh, this parallelism, we have the several tasks. We know that the workflow is composed by task, and each task has the input port and output port. The data are consumed from the input port and produced at the, the output port. So, uh, so each task here scheduled, could be scheduled as an uh, atomic execution unit. That means that each task, we can run it uh, independently uh, from each other. That could be run on virtual machine in parallel. So this part, uh, this is the logical view for this uh, parallelism. And if we implement uh, on, uh, on the cloud, we could pull those, those tasks into the queue, schedule those into the queue. And, and then each task could be assigned to uh, a node. And that, that, could, be, uh, that could, could allow the each task to, to, to run in parallel. So that parallelism could support the compute-intensive workflow. Another uh, level of parallelism we call the job-level parallelism. Uh, the task can be further uh, broke down into smaller independent uh, computation unit. We call it a job. And that job could process a given function uh, and consume a partition of data. And the job could be uh, run in parallel with other jobs. But the difference from the test of parallelism is that job is, cannot be composed with other tasks in the workflow. So, so user, workflow user, they, they don't say the job inside this task. Uh, that's the difference from the, 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 the first uh, parallelism. Uh, to deal with the, this parallelism, if we program, that's, uh, that's probably very complex for uh, domain scientists. So we propose what we call uh, customized cloud tasks that help the domain scientists to deal with uh, uh, this parallelism so that the, the, this task could run on the workflow. And after they, they run it, the power level jobs could be run on the uh, different nodes, I like, I like the my function. So uh, this could, uh, that power level could support the data intensive workflow. In, 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 in the physical layer, we can see that the, the queue, in the queue, they have some, uh, uh, some jobs in the queue. And the, 
the, each job can be assigned to different uh, uh, nodes to run in parallel. <coughs> work level parallelism. Work level uh, workflow can be uh, further separated into uh, a different sub-workflows, like this one. And each sub-workflow could be uh, run in parallel with other workflows. And for, for each workflow, the data and the computation results have to be co-located. Um, and so, so in that case, this parallelism could support the pi uh, pipeline workflow. And there are two solutions to solve that problem in the physical layer. Uh, we could assign, uh, schedule the workflow into the queue, and each, each work item is a workflow itself. And that workflow be, could be assigned to a uh, different node. Or we could schedule the workflow into tasks. So all the tasks in, uh, in this workflow will be put to the queue, and the node will, uh, and the first node who assigned to, or the first task will uh, assign to uh, the, the nodes, the node will be, be uh, uh, be recognized, okay, I will deal with that, that workflow. I only work, uh, deal with the workflow, uh, the, the, the sub-workflow that, uh, that have, for example, if I deal with the T11, so the next job will be the T12 until the T1 n So that's another approach to support the pipeline workflows. Okay, so let me talk about the cloud workflow service. Before we talk about that, I I like to first be talking about the static workflow reference architecture. Uh, that's a, uh, uh, so a static workflow management system actually uh, contains the, the following several layer. The first layer we call it the option layer. It contains the heterogeneous data sources and the services and its computing environment. The reason we separate the option layer uh, from the uh, bug layer is we want to uh, isolate the, the heterogeneous services and data from the scope of the, the whole sentient workflow. And the test manager layer is about how to manage the test, how to manage the data that produce a better test, and how to manage the the, uh, the metadata of the data uh, of the data uh, of the uh, the workflow execution, and the next layer is about the workflow uh, management layer. It's about uh, th this is about the, the building block in that layer is about how to manage the workflow, and then the uh, presentation layer is about how to present a visualization of the whole system, and. Once we want to pull this reference architecture to the cloud workflow service, we, will, we could think about the first to, to promote the, the, the first layer to the cloud. That means if I have the data, and I, if I want to use the service as a provided third party, and that service is, is on the cloud, so uh, why not to, to to try to get another interface that connect to the, 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 the data from the cloud or the service from the cloud. So that's the first step we could do. Another one is we put the test management layer to the cloud. That means I can still keep my original workflow service systems, uh, workflow system, and we want to call a task that text it on the cloud. So that's another level. Or oh, I can pull the whole workflow management to the cloud. That means if I have thousands of workflows, I, my, my computer cannot handle such management of those workflows. The whole schedule, whole management of the workflow could be on the cloud. So there could be a different level of the uh, the way to interact uh, the clouds. <coughs> we don't limit the way that, okay, everything has to be on the cloud. All, only one can, all, only, uh, only one can be on the cloud. We could have the combination on the cloud. That means 
if I want to build an enterprise workflow system, and there is a huge uh, workflow transactions, then that maybe I should pull the cloud, the workflow management layer, direct to the to on the cloud. Or if I only deal with some of the long-running task, that uh, scientific application was was uh, was computer intensive, data intensive. Now just pull down the cloud. The workflow schedule is still on the local. So this is the hybrid uh, decision to make how to pull the, the workflow uh, service on the cloud. In summary, the two ways to deal with the, the uh, workflow lab services. One is we, we have the workflow composer, and we submit to the workflow specification how we design the workflow and the workflow de definition, in other words, sent to the cloud work service. And the workflow service deal with the whole workflow execution. When they're finished, get a result to, to, the, to the domain scientist. Another way is we have our work, uh, local workflow composer. We have our workflow. OK, only several tasks in, in the workflow uh, services. Uh, so we call the workflow services and run it, and, and then when it gets to the result, the back to the workflow system, local workflow system, and continue to run. So there's a two approach to run our cloud workflow service. And that's the architecture of our current uh, workflow service. We design the workflow, uh, 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 what we call the specific transition services, that means if I have a design the workflow, I submit to the web role of the, uh, that services. That service will, will translate the workflow specification to the queue. And then the work role of the, the workflow scheduling services read the, uh, re gather the information from the queue and then schedule the workflow. After this schedule the workflow, they will think, uh, the scheduling service will say, OK, how we run it? What is the parallelism we could run? How to optimize the workflow? And they send to the queue, and through the queue, the test execution service will gather the result, uh, gather package, which test we should run, and run it using that, uh, that services. And the data product management service will deal with the, the data that uh, on, the, on, on the blog, on the uh, cloud table, um, and they also, uh, we have uh, the workflow monitor services that de dealing, uh, dealing with the monitoring the whole workflow execution. Uh, for the automatic scaling, uh, I have a formation in, in the paper. So here I just uh, highlighted the, uh, the, the basic idea. The basic idea is we have several uh, re service requesters, and we have the jobs, work, task, or workflows that have to process. And we have the available virtual machine that we, uh, we ask the, the, the cloud environment to provide. And then, for each, each user, for, uh, the, the cloud service uh, will have a default value to say, OK, how many number of virtual machines I can be assigned to each uh, service requester. When that part here is um, five virtual machines. And if there are two tasks in parallel could <coughs> run, we design, so, so we will assign the three parallel, whatever task or job the workflow to, to each node. So in that case, things, things seems uh, in, uh, everything run in parallel, and the, the three, <coughs> three nodes are consumed to run that, that request. Oh, if the service requester say, OK, even though I have the three tasks in parallel run, and the optimization is, is to run in three, three machines, but I just want to run two machines. The reason is, in the future, the cloud environment and the cloud resources is not free. So we have to consider that how to optimize the workflow schedule to save your users money. So, so in that case, this, our uh, cloud work service also could scale the, our uh, workflow 
to make to make uh, more um, more efficient and economic. Uh, so uh, here this is the workflow implementation, and uh, since the time is limited, so I just uh, show several slides here. That's the test level parallelism that designed on on, on Trident. And you can see that there are several tasks uh, uh, in parallel uh, to present it, and they will be run in parallel in that case. And here is a workflow level parallelism. Several workflows were uh, run uh, uh, in parallel, and that's the result in terms of the CPU and memory. And here is the job level parallelism. And we have the customized uh, test. We call it a Kermer uh, uh, distance matrix. And uh, we could provide a both uh, uh, cloud-based and PC-based execution. And that's it, the result. OK, the conclusion. So we designed the three levels of workflow computation parallelism. And uh, we have the solution to schedule the uh, compute-intensive, data-intensive pipeline workflow in the distributed environment, and we have uh, support the service to support this technology and scale the workflow on demand. And uh, our, our going work is about the com comprehensive performance evaluation um, on the several sensitive applications. OK, uh, the finally, I would like to thank all the co-authors, uh, Roger, Dean, and Jared. And they gave me the. Um, a great support while I was in, um, in Microsoft, uh, Microsoft the And also I would thank to Chang uh, for their support and uh, for the biology uh, well, workflow design. So that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> uh, time for a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. So your, your jobs comprise of tasks, or your tasks comprise of jobs? Uh, you, uh, you, you mean, oh, tasks can, can be. Can I have a job with 100 tasks in it, or is, do I have one task with 100 jobs? Oh, from our de definition, we could have a 100 style job in one task. Ah, okay. Uh, so, um, Windows HPC server does it the other way around. Oh, that's just the terminology, I yeah, think. But yeah. We're using the APIs to program Windows HPC in a hybrid solution where you've got some of your computation running in the cloud and some of the computation running on a Windows HPC server. If you've defined jobs and tasks differently, mm -hmm. it's going to be catastrophic to users. Mm -hmm. So I think you might need to, if you're just starting, you might think about changing that and talk to the Windows HPC team. Oh. Because they spent years getting users to understand that when you submit a job to an HPC cluster, you would do a job. And if you're doing a parametric sweep, a job consists of hundreds of tasks. And there are hundreds of HP, Windows HPC users who do that every day. And if you're suddenly coming in saying, oh, by the way, you want to be using cloud, and say, oh, yeah, but you've got to, it's just going to cause confusion. So, so the, here we, I want to say this, that there is a parallelism. The, yeah, we, we don't limit that the other. No, it's the terminology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might need to change your terminology and but swap uh, jobs for tasks just to be consistent with the Windows HPC team. Uh, we... We yeah, have a, the, the, the task, way. the term, <laughs> terminology of a task and workflow has a very long extra existing terminology. Everybody uses task in at least the, uh, the, uh, the, the workflow yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the community. Yeah, community. Yeah, this is just probably different community, yeah, yeah, use the different terminology. That's for Dean to, mm. Dean to figure out, I think. <laughs> 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 Trying to figure out this one. <laughs> okay. Is there any other question? So mm -hmm. you try to map the, the workflow into the cloud computing, but the cloud computing is a scarce resource. How can you take out the load balance? You, know, you have really no the load in the cloud, and not you can map your application to the cloud. So how can you judge this as a Uh, you you mean how to load your workload? To oh, cloud load balance at the actual load balance inside the cloud server. Uh, load balance inside the, oh, that that part is <coughs> hidden from the the uh, workflow services. Uh, you mean the load uh, balance the provided by the cloud? Yeah. That that's prob 
that was provided by the caller, we, we cannot control that. What we only could do is we could schedule the, the workflow uh, in different parallel so they could be run in parallel. That's, that's what we do. But that, that's also a good uh, uh, perspective to, to think further. Thank you. So in the workflow level parallelism, mm -hmm. if you have, like the example you showed, there were a lot of workflows that were sharing the same prefix of tasks, for example, and then they were using some different algorithm to... Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, to yeah, we we'll use the different algorithms. <coughs> so have you considered uh, maybe sharing uh, some of the tasks between workflows? Yeah, we can do that. Like since every, everything does the same job until the last step, have you consider sharing the same tasks between workflows? Oh, yeah, of course. I just want to um, ask you, there is a different, uh, there is a different yeah, workflow going on. Uh, they probably will, uh, <coughs> right, totally different we're just going to have to uh, we need for the recording. Oh, I can, yeah. So so yeah. Well, let's just have yeah. you mic'd up and then I'll turn yeah. on, yeah. on the camera. Okay. Okay. Who okay. talks the most, right. really? Me, probably. Yep. I, I this to you halfway through. So, but not necessarily have the, that case. I mean, use different algorithms. They could totally different workload in parallel. <coughs> yes, you're right. In that case, we would do to design workload. 